Always good to be with Kim and the Money Show people. I'm never here enough. Life moves too fast. Now, contrary to what you're going to hear for most of the rest of my speech, I'm the most optimistic man in the room. Keith Fitzgerald has nothing on me. He's a pessimist, a doom and gloomer. Because I believe they're going to, within five years, have a pill that will arrest our aging. That's good for you and me, Dennis. Actually begin to dial us back a little bit. And five years after that, they're going to start turning us back younger. I mean, you're going to get to be 150 years old in the body of a 25-year-old. Even better, your wife's going to get to be in the body of a 25-year-old. So you better be nice to her. That's good news. Because we're going to, I'm writing a book on what the world will look like in 2039. And we're going to get to 2039, and we're going to look back and go, oh my God, all this crisis stuff that we thought we were having doesn't make any difference because we're going to live through a lot more crises. Things are going to be good. We'll be going to Mars. Life is going to be wonderful. However, in the meantime, after that happy commercial, let's talk about not the new technologies, which will be the first third of the book, not the biotech stuff, which is really cool, but let's talk about what's happening in the United States. My friend Neil Howe talks about the fourth turning. I think it's one of the most important books that's ever been written. How in Anglo-Saxon worlds, and it happens actually in other cultures, we repeat ourselves every 80 years in 20 year cycles. It seems we screw our kids up in the same way in a repeatable manner. And we have the same cultural event. And when we get to the end of the four, what he calls each of these are turnings, when we get to the end of the fourth turning, we've always had a war. I mean, going back for 500 years. And he has been telling me this for three or four years. And I'm, tr I'm looking around and said, I don't see a war. And I picked up the phone after the latest Kavanaugh hearings. And I called him and I called Neil and I said, Neil, we're in a war. You've got your war. The country is at odds with each other. And it's going to get worse, not better. You guys, many of you, are already on Social Security. Technically, I could be. They're going to make me start taking, they made me take Medicare. They're going to make me start taking Social Security in one year, because I'm 69 today. So, I'll be taking money from the next generation of kids. And we're all gonna keep living longer and they're not gonna be happy because here's the problem. And it's what I call the Great Reset. And I did a series in Thoughts from the Frontline. You can go back and read it. It was a nine-part series. Longest piece that I've ever done. But they're now making me write less than 3,000 words each letter so that they're short. So you can digest it. And I started talking about all the debt that's in the world and all the government liabilities. We have, in the aggregate, US, Europe, China, Canada, Australia, Indonesia, South America, Brazil, everybody, a half a quadrillion dollars of debt and government liabilities, unfunded liabilities. 
I look at that and I don't shake. My hand doesn't quiver. And the reason it doesn't is because you can't pay it. If Dennis, one of my great friends, sued me for a billion dollars, I just laugh at him because he's just trying to get my attention. If he sues me for a hundred thousand dollars, I get nervous. That means he wants my money. <laughs> we can't pay a, 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 you know, in the U.S., we know we can't pay our unfunded liabilities. We're growing our debt at $12 trillion a year. They're pulling back $600 billion in treasuries they're selling back. The world is not buying our debt anymore because we're not sending enough dollars out because we're going into trade wars. My letter that's going out this week that says trade deficits simply don't matter if you're a reserve currency. And there's four or five countries that can get away. Switzerland. Switzerland can get away with running a trade deficit if they want to. Europe for a little while longer, Japan, and of course the United States. We have an exorbitant privilege. People will take our dollars and then buy our debt. And somehow, somebody, God bless him, has been whispering in one man's ear that the word trade deficit is bad. Well, our accounting surplus, the money that's coming back in, balances. It's called an accounting identity. That's kind of the, the mathematical geek speak for two plus two equals four. And those two things have to equal. It doesn't make any difference as long, if you're running a trade deficit, as long as you're bringing in money and we bring it in from all of our investments that bring money back in. I mean, Apple makes a lot of money. Google makes, I mean, they all make money. They bring it in. Little bitty companies bring it in. By the way, Aaron, I don't see a clock, so I don't know when I'm finished. You're, you're going to be five minutes back there? I mean, because I'll go for all day. Most of these people will know that. Okay. Um, sometime, something is going to happen. It could be Italy. Dennis has been writing about Italy a little bit in his letter. He's up next. Maybe he'll talk about Italy. I'll talk about it some. I mean, their rates are rising. The ECB is getting ready to cut off the, their buying. They bought $380 billion of Italian debt. No wonder their rates went below U.S. rates. Now they're not going to buy it. Who's going to buy that debt? And if they don't buy it, Italian rates go up, their deficits go much bigger, and they begin to look like Greece. Except that Italy makes a difference. Nobody cared about Greece. Greece, who cares? Except the Greeks, who went through a total depression. Down 50%, unemployment 25, 30%, 50% among the youth. It was terrible. If Germany doesn't allow the ECB to crank back up again, Italy will be forced to run a two currency system. They'll have the euro and the Italian script, what is called an Italian lira, that governments will trade in, and you will have to buy these, this lira. When the government wants to pay you, you're going to have to take it, and you're going to have to buy them to pay your taxes. Well, that doesn't really work if you're in a monetary union. The European monetary union, the euro, is the single biggest economic mistake of the last 100 years. And it's going to blow up at some point. Either that or they're going to have to just say, we're going to take everybody's debt and we're going to throw it onto the back of the European Central Bank. Well, how's that going to work? All of 
this debt, all of the government promises. By the way, Europe has made more government promises than the United States has. China is going to grow old before they grow rich. And they're running out of people because they had one child, one policy. All of this is coming together in the 20s and it's going to start cascading. And at some point, we have a real crisis. And we're going to have to reset all of that debt, all of those government promises. Dennis, I'll make you a side bet. And I bet you, I bet you won't take this bet with me. Do you think they're going to pay us Social Security in five or ten years? You think they'll, you think they'll pay it? I'll, I'll make you a bet that they're going to take it away from me because I'm going to be too, I, and you, because I think we're going to be making too much money. They, I mean, they can't, they, they can't afford it. they got to change the world. And cute Miss Debbie back there is telling me five minutes. Now, I can keep going, but it just gets worse. Except in about 15 years, the health care is going to get cheaper. Because if they start turning you young again, and I swear to God, they're going to. I'm on the company board of one company that's going to do it. There's others that are right there behind side us. When they do that, and you're young again, you won't have the, the health problems of old age. Health care bills will go down. Hospitals will not be as busy. My biggest personal investment is in a cancer company that we've got a full bullet for cancer. We're 90% certain it's going to work. We've already done phase one, we're into phase two. We're seeing miracles. People with brain gliomas that were given three months to live or two years later are still out playing golf and going back to work. You know the biggest risk to my investment now is the other kinds of companies that may have cheaper, better, faster cures. What are all those cancer hospitals gonna do? On and on and on. However, there's a way to get to the other side of the Great Reset with your portfolios. There's several ways. I think the way to do it is, number one, you pick some winning technologies and you spread your money among that for maybe 20% of your portfolio. And the rest you put in your core. But you don't buy and hold a core strategy anymore. Buying and holding is a death sentence. I was talking with Bill White, the head of the BIS, Bank of International Systems, he was their chief economist, and we were talking about inflation and deflation. He says, I think we'll have both. First we have deflation, then we have hyperinflation, and it depends on the country. It's just, when you've got that much debt in a, in a $50 trillion world, you can't, and by the way, it's growing at faster than the world is growing. It's growing every year. So what do you do? You diversify your trading strategies. You never long anything forever. Now, I'm going to be doing a panel at what time, Brian? I see you, sit, I see you sitting there. Uh, two, it's this afternoon. Huh? 4.30? 1.30. I'm going to do it at 1.30. It's downstairs. And I'll tell you one of my strategies right now, because I don't think they're recording this. I haven't announced it yet. You're hearing it here first. I'm going to move to Puerto Rico before the end of the year. Because if you have intellectual property, it's taxed at 4% in Puerto Rico total. That's your total tax. I can do that math. I'm not a rocket scientist. You know, I'm not traders and like the, some of these guys up here, but I can do 4% versus 40, 45. 
Besides that, I'm on a Caribbean beach, on a golf course, beautiful golf course, Dennis. You, you got to have to come, you have to come play. But in my garage are lots of books that I've kind of accumulated over the years after writing seven books. And at our booth, we have 50 to 60 books. And I know that I'm going to have to empty my garage in my high rise. So we've got 50 to 60 books, and you're helping me by coming down and getting a free book. But you've got to talk to Brian for 30 seconds about the Malden Smart Core program, where we show you how to diversify trading strategies. It's a mutual fund, it's a money management system, just it's simple. Punch the button, we'll tell you about it, we'll send you, we'll inundate you with materials, but it's, I think, the way you manage your core. And I call it smart core because it's not an alternative investment strategy. We're invested in everything, but not all the time. We breathe, you can see it move. I'll tell you how it works. Then come to the booth, I'll give you a free book. You can pick one of my last five or six books that's there, but you just won't have one. Unless you write a check right then and then we'll have that you have two or three. <laughs> And Aaron, am I supposed to be up now? Two minutes. One question. Anybody have a question? Yes, sir. What is the name of the what? The cancer company is a private company. It's called Vexion. So I can tell you about it because it's not public. I don't know that it'll be public for another couple of years. B-E-X-I-O-N. You can Google it. It'll come up. Bexion Pharmaceuticals. I'm on the board of another company called Ajex. A-G-E-X. It's a private company now. It'll be spun out of biotime. It will be public just because they're going to spin it out in another two months. They'll be turning us back young. There are, there are other technologies out there. Keith was right. The young kid in here, Matt, yesterday. I mean... Guys, there's a revolution going on in the science world, in AI. George Gilder just enthralls me. But we've got to make sure that our portfolios don't get ripped apart while we're on the way to the brave, shiny new world. And that's why we have to diversify. Yes, ma'am. Uh, don't smoke it. The CBD, honest to God, I'm ashamed, but I actually take CBD. My wife gives me a gummy bear every day because <laughs> it helps with, you know, the inflammation as we get older. Um, there are people that medical marijuana really does make a difference. I think they should legalize, first of all, I think they should legalize it because there's too many people in jail for marijuana. I mean, dear God, if we're gonna let people drink alcohol and I've had to quit drinking and I can't smoke marijuana, so I'm sober for the rest. By the way, when they turn me back to 25, heck with it, I'm gonna go back. But, <laughs> but the, I, I'm gonna be sober, sadly, for the next 10, 15 years. And in, in, is, is it in the companies that we're in? Uh, no, but that will show up in a, another company that, depending on your net worth, we can talk to you about. Thank you very, very much. She's showing up a bullet that she's getting. I think she's got a Glock out for me, so thank you very much.